In this video, we're going to take the mystery out of pseudo-elements, specifically before and after pseudo-elements. So what are pseudo-elements and how do they work? Well, it's easier if I just show you. So I have an index.html file here, and all I have in the body is a paragraph, and I'm linking to the style sheet that we're using here. In the style sheet, I'm importing the Google font Roboto, and I'm doing the normal resets here, box sizing, border box, margin and padding of zero. In the body, we're setting the font family, setting the height. We're displaying as flex and centering the justify content and align items. This is just for the purposes of the video to demo so that the content is in the middle. We have the background set to a dark gray and the color of the text to white. And then in the paragraph, I'm just increasing the font size a little bit for the demo and set a margin around the edges. So to add a pseudo element, first we'll select the element that we want to add a pseudo element to. So in this case, we're going to use paragraph and then double colon and then before. So it's important also to understand why there's two colons instead of one. So a single colon applies to a pseudo class such as a hover. A double colon applies to a pseudo element such as a before or an after. So before CSS3, a single colon was used for both. Now after CSS3 was released, the correct way is a single colon for pseudo classes and double colons for pseudo elements. Single colon will still work because of backwards compatibility in browsers, but in the future that may be removed, so it's important to write these correctly. So on a pseudo element, the first thing that we'll always want to add is our content. And content accepts a string. So we could type before, and I'll save this to see what it looks like. So you see here that it adds the content before the paragraph. All right, so let's look at the Chrome tools. So here in the dev tools, we have our paragraph, and then within the paragraph, we have our before and our content. So the before is not coming before the paragraph element, it's coming before the element's content. And so we could do the same thing here, and we could change this to after, and now you see that we have our before, and then our content, and then our after. So we're creating elements within an element. Now notice something here, I can't select the text from the pseudo elements. This is important and I'll bring this up again in a minute. So on a pseudo element, we can use uh, any normal CSS properties. So we could set a width and a height and let's set a background color and I'll save that. So with a pseudo element, it's very important that we have the content defined. I'll go ahead and remove the content and let me save this. And now you'll see that the entire element has disappeared. Even though we have the width, height, and background set, the pseudo element is still gone. And if I look at the dev tools again, you'll see that it's not there. It doesn't show up at all. So if we don't have the content defined, it doesn't exist. All right, so if we uncomment this and we at least put content blank like this, and then we'll need to display this as inline block. And now we'll have before, we'll have our square that we defined here. And we have it again here. And we can see it in our dev tools as well. And we can also do some cool styling, like uh, we could change this to block and then we could set the width to 100%. We'll set the height to five. And now we've got a line across the top. And of course we could do the same thing to the after. So now you can see how we can do some cool things with before and after. All right, so a side note. So in our resets we have box sizing set to border box, but this actually does not apply to pseudo elements. 
So to do that, we actually have to add the pseudo elements into our resets here. So we can do star before and star after. And that will work just fine. And so now I want to show you some other things that we can do with content. So instead of specifying a string, we could actually specify a URL. So we can actually use an image. We could do something like this, and I'm going to take the width and the height and the background away. And there we can have an image before. We could do the same thing after. Another example, so if we have a bunch of block quotes on our website, we could style them and use a before and after to put the quotation marks. And so in the content, uh, we could use open quote, just like that. And I'm going to remove the display block. And then in the after, uh, we could do the same thing, except we'll use a close quote. And I'll remove the rest of that. You can see there that it automatically adds our quotation marks. And we could style these as well. We could change the size. And we could make them stand out by changing the color. I'll put that on the after as well. And we could take some time and style these better, but I just wanted to show you this option. Another good example would be links. So I'm going to add some more lorem here. And then let's add some links in here. And so the first one, we'll just make it go to a non-existent file, but it's going to be a PDF. All right, and then we'll add another one here. And this is going to go to an external link, but it's actually not going to go anywhere. But this will represent an external link. All right, that looks really terrible. All right, so let's style these. Uh, first thing I'm going to look at is the link itself. And let's change the color because I can barely even see that. And uh, let's set the text decoration to none. All right, that's better. And then what we can do is um, on a lot of websites, you'll see a link. And then after the link, you'll see uh, an icon. So for a PDF image or an icon that specifies that this is an external link. And so to do this, we're going to use Font Awesome. So you do have to sign up for a free Font Awesome account. And once you sign up, you'll get a link to a personalized kit. All right, so I've already signed up. I'll go to my kit. And all you have to do is copy this code here. And then in the index.html file, just before the closing body tag, we're going to insert that script. All right, so let's search for the icon that we're looking for. So the first one was a PDF. So what we can do in the content is we can use Unicode characters. And so for this icon, this is the Unicode character. So we'll copy that. So now I want to style the anchor after, but I don't want this to be on every single link. So we're going to specify which links we want to add this to. So we could have multiple links across our website uh, that are PDFs. So what we're going to specify here is that the href, we want to look at the ending of the href. So we're going to say dollar sign that looks at the end. And we're going to say anything that ends in dot PDF. On this, we want to set our content to the Unicode character. Now we have to escape it. So a backslash. All right, and that's not all that we have to do in order to use Font Awesome. We also have to set the font family. And so this is going to be Font Awesome. And you have to specify the version. The current version is 5. And then you also have to specify the kit. So is it a free kit, a pro kit, etc. So we'll type in pro. You may have to type in free. And then we also have to set the font weight. And so for these, it's 900. So now I can hit save. And there we have our icon. And I think it's just slightly too big. So I'm also going to set the uh, font size to 0.9 EM. Now that looks a little bit better. All right, and so we can do the same thing for our next link here, which is an external link. So let's go back to our font awesome and let's search for an external link, external. 
All right, so I'll pick this one, and here's the Unicode character. I'll copy that. And then I'm going to duplicate this, Alt-Shift-Down, and I'll paste that Unicode character in there. Uh, but this time, instead of looking at the end of the href for a PDF, I want to look at the beginning. So the beginning is the caret character, and we're going to look at the beginning of the href for HTTP. I'm not going to go any further than that. HTTP, as long as that's the beginning, it will target anything that is HTTP, HTTPS, etc. So these are, will all be external links. All right, I'll save that. And now we have our PDF and our external links. So now is probably a good time to talk about when not to use pseudo elements. So you should never use a pseudo element for important copy or text. Because remember at the beginning, I showed you that pseudo element content is not selectable. Also, pseudo elements may not be accessible on some screen readers. And then on screen readers that do support pseudo elements, it's going to read out loud the content. So when we're creating pseudo elements, a lot of times we're just thinking about the UI or the user interface, what they see. But we also have to think about the UX or the user experience. So only use pseudo elements where they make sense. All right, next I'm going to show you how we can use pseudo elements to make a hover effect on a button that looks really cool. So I have a very simple HTML file here. All we have is an anchor with a roll of button and the text of hover. On our styles, I'm importing a Google font. We have our reset to set our box sizing to border box. And then simple CSS in our body, we're setting the height. Uh, we're displaying as flex and centering so that it's here in the center for the demo, uh, background, font, and font size. All right, so let's first look at our anchor. So we're going to set the position to relative and set the overflow to hidden. We're going to set the color to the same background color. I know this looks counterintuitive, but you'll see in a minute. We have a font weight of 700. We're going to transform the text to uppercase, set the text decoration to none. We'll have padding of one rim top and bottom, two rim left and right. All right, so let's save that and see. Obviously, we're not going to see anything because now the text is the same as the background. So let's get to that next. All right, so we're going to look at the anchor before, and we're going to set our content to blank. We're going to set the position on this to absolute. So we have the anchor set to relative so that we can absolutely position our pseudo elements. All right, we're going to go from the top three pixels down from the bottom three pixels up, from the left three pixels in, and from the right three pixels in. We're gonna set a background of this to white, and we want a border, the same dark gray color, solid four pixels, and we want a Z index of negative one. The Z index of negative one is so that it goes behind the text, and so now we can see our text. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the after. So we're gonna create an after pseudo element with a content of blank, position of absolute again. This time, top, bottom, left, and right will be zero. We'll set a background on this to an orange. Okay, and then we're also gonna want a Z index on this one, and we'll set it to a negative two. All right, now we have our outline, and that's what we want to end up with when we hover. But in order to do something cool with this, we're going to include a transform, and we're going to rotate this negative 90 degrees let's see what that does all right it moves it so what actually what i'm going to do for now i'm going to change the overflow hidden i'm going to comment that out so that we can see the entire element all right so i rotated that negative 90 degrees i also want to translate it so the first value is the x value and i want that to be a negative 50 percent so it's going to move to the left 50 percent and the second value is the y value. So I want that to be a negative 100%. All right, so that moved it over and down. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to change the way that that works. So I'm going to use a transform origin and I want to say top left. All right, and so what that does is it takes the top left, which is now down here, and it uses that as the point of origin for the translation and the rotation. All right, and then we're also going to put a transition, and we'll set that to transform. 
and 300 milliseconds. So now in order to make this do something when we hover, we need to select our anchor and select the hover. And then we're going to target the after. So this is important here because uh, we, the hover needs to go after the anchor. So we're hovering on the anchor, but we're targeting the after pseudo element. If hover came after the after, uh, it would not work. All right, so when we hover the anchor, we want the after pseudo element to change its transform. So we're gonna transform and we're gonna set rotate to zero and translate to zero, zero. So that's gonna reset it to its normal position. All right, I'll save that. Now as we hover, we see that it goes into position. That's fun. Okay, so let's go back up here and let's uncomment the hidden. So now anything outside of the anchor, the overflow is hidden. And now as we hover, all we see is the outline. Pretty cool. Now there are a lot of different ways of doing this. This is just one way. Um, there are some pretty cool things that you can do with this. So let me comment out the overflow again. And what we could do for now, I'll just set this to zero degrees and we're gonna comment out the origin here. We'll say a negative uh, 75 and then set this to 50. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can play around with these numbers and do different things with it. And so I like it down here. And then as we hover, it goes into place. So let's, uh, let's uncomment this again, change the overflow to hidden. And so now it'll start out like this. And then as you hover over it, it grows into place. So play around with the numbers. You can do a lot of different things with it. Okay, so the last thing that I'm gonna show you is a hover effect on an image. So I have another basic index.html here. Uh, we have a div with a class of container. Within the container, we have two cards. Within the card, we have an image with the class of card image. And then we have another div with the class of card text. Within that, we have our title and our body and then a second card exactly the same. In our styles, we're importing a font. We have our normal resets. We have some basic CSS here, styling the body. We're using Flex again. And if you're not familiar with Flexbox, I have a video on that, All right? And then on our H3, we're transforming that to uppercase. And then on our container, we're setting the height to 100% so that we can flex this into a column and center it. Uh, eventually that's going to look better. All right, so let's continue on with this CSS here. Next, we're gonna look at our card. And on the card, we're gonna set the position to relative and we'll set a margin of one EM. And then we're going to look at our card before and after. So on both the before and after, we're gonna set a blank content and we'll set the position here to absolute, opacity to one. We're gonna transition the transform uh, with an ease out of 250 milliseconds. All right, so we'll define that transform here in a minute. On the card before, we wanna set the top left and right to one EM and the border top to three pixels solid white. And then we'll have a transform on here scale. So the first value that it accepts is the X, so we want the horizontal to be zero and the vertical, the Y, to be one. So basically right here, we're only scaling the horizontal value. So then we wanna set the transform origin to left. So we want it to start and end on the left. All right, so now we'll go to the after and we're gonna do something very similar. We'll have a bottom left and right of one EM and the border bottom to the three pixels solid white. Same thing on the scale. And this time on the transform origin, we want it to be on the right. All right, so let's save that. And we don't have anything so far because we need to set our hover. So let's keep going. All right, so now we'll set our hover. So we're looking at our card hover and then before and our card hover after. So again, we wanna make sure that the hover goes on to the 
element that we're hovering on. And then we're going to style what comes after that, the before element and the after pseudo element. All right, so on these, when we hover, we want to transform that scale to the original, which is one, one. All right, so let's save that. That's looking a little odd because we still have to style a bit here with the text. So let's keep going with the CSS. So on the image, we want to set the width to 100%. We're gonna display it as block. And we're gonna set a transition on the opacity, ease out 250 milliseconds. And then when we hover over the card, we want the image opacity to go down so that we can see the text more easily. So let's save that and we'll see that. So the image darkens, it's still uh, a bit off there. Let's go, let's keep going with the CSS. All right, so we'll look at the card text now. We're gonna set the position on that to absolute. Uh, padding of zero top and bottom, one EM left and right. Color to white, opacity initially to zero. And we'll set a transition on the opacity, ease out 250 milliseconds. And we're gonna set the top to zero. And we're gonna display this as flex and with the flex direction of column. We're gonna justify the content center and align item center and height of 100%. All right, so we'll save that. Now that's looking a lot better already. So as we hover, now we have our lines, our before and after pseudo elements are showing up properly. So let's keep going. Now we'll look at our card hover card text. So when we hover over the card, we want the card text opacity to go up to one. I'll save that. There we go. That looks pretty good. And we also want to look at the card title. Um, I want to set the font size on that to two rem. That looks a lot better. Card title is a lot bigger. So that's looking pretty good. Now I wanna show you a different way that we could do this. So here we're using top zero, flex, column, justify content, align items, height 100%. We're using these lines here to arrange the card text. And this is, this is fine, but there's another way that we can do it. We could set the width to 100%, set a text transform translate, a left of 50% and a top of 50%. So let me comment this out and I'll save it. And we get the exact same thing with this. So what this is doing is it's positioning top to 50%, which is halfway, and then left 50%, again halfway, and then we're transforming and translating, which is basically just moving it. The first value is your X value. So it's gonna move it back to the left 50%, and then the next value is the Y, so it's gonna move it up 50%. It's very hard to wrap your head around this, but basically it's moving it and then moving it back, which is centering it. And that's the hardest thing to explain, but it works. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. If you stuck around to the end, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. So before you go, if you liked this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. I upload new content every week, so hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. And if you think this video or any of the videos on my channel might be helpful to someone else, please share them. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram at CodeStacker. Thanks for watching.